Hey guys, it's Alec Torelli, and welcome to a episode of Ask Alec, where we're gonna talk about variants in tournament poker. So I'm excited to share this episode with you guys. I got a new camera and a new mic, so I hope you guys like this setup, hope the quality is improved on the channel. And this question comes from my boy Randy, who wants to know how long you could run bad in tournaments, and if you do play poker for a living, how much cash will you need to start up? What sort of bankroll implications are there with tournament poker? How long can I lose for, etc.? So, big question here, a lot of questions in one. Uh, thanks, Randy, for the, the inspiration for this video. But I do want to preface this before we jump into the numbers. I'm going to show you guys how you can use hard facts and data to determine what's the best way to structure your bankroll for tournaments and, and what you guys can expect for how long you could run bad, uh, what the variance is like, what your win rate's gonna be, how much money you can expect to make when playing tournaments. I'm gonna show you guys that in this video using a really cool poker program that I like to use. So before we do that, I just wanna preface this really quick with saying that I'm definitely partial to cash games. I've made most of my living playing cash games the last 12 years. I love cash games. It's not to say I haven't had success in tournaments or I like them, but the nature of tournament poker is such that there is a lot more variance involved. So I think most, a lot of good players gravitate towards cash games because it's a more sustainable form of income. And then they supplement that with playing tournaments on the side. So I just want to preface it with that that is my bias. So you guys know that going in. It's not to say that you, know, you can't make a living playing tournament poker. You just will succumb to a ton of variance. So I want you guys to be prepared for that when we jump into the numbers so that you kind of have an idea of what to expect. And you also know where I'm coming from because I think that's fair. Anyway, let's jump into it. This is a tournament variance calculator, which you can find on PokerDope. And I'm going to go into the lab and show you guys some of the work that I do to help me structure my bankroll for when I'm playing tournaments. All right, so here is PokerDope, and to use this site, you just go to PokerDope.com. You click here, and you could click on Tournaments vari Tournament Variance Calculator. You could also do this for cash games, but we're going to only focus on tournaments for the scope of this video. One thing to take with a grain of salt is that I don't know how accurate their variance calculator is. I assume that it's accurate. It makes sense that it would be. I'm not sure how complicated this stuff is to simulate, so there's no reason to think it wouldn't be accurate, but... I can't vouch for it. So um, even though I do make a lot of decisions based on these numbers. So anyway, you go here to tournament variance calculator and you could see here, you could enter all of the information based on your particular situation. While I don't know your particular situation, I do have a program that's coming out soon and you could get more link at the description below and it helps you customize these things for your particular situation. So you could go through the numbers for whatever your bankroll is, the games you play, and then customize your bankroll uh, to help you in your particular situation. So if you want more information, enter your name and email in the link below. I'll send you some awesome content for this. But for now, we are going to simulate John. John, and this is representative of his tournament career. Now, I wanted to simulate someone who is one of the best players in the world because if you see his numbers and they're daunting to you, then chances are uh, your situation might not be as favorable as John's because John is a very successful tournament poker pro. He has a $100,000 bankroll, pretty damn good. He's top 5% of all poker players, which means he has a high ROI. We're gonna simulate that here. He competes in the WPT, the Poker Stars events, the EPT, former EPT, WSOP. And he plays one tournament a week for 40 weeks a year, which is a pretty pretty good amount of tournaments. Um, maybe he could play a little more than that, maybe during the World Series, whatever. But this is on average. Some weeks he doesn't play tournaments, some weeks he plays cash games. Let's say we're playing 40 tournaments, live tournaments a year, okay? So we go to the average number of players, which enter in the numbers, and it'll spit out this sort of formula, and I'll go over it with you. So average number of players in the events um, because he plays major events, let's say that there's an average of, we want to be conservative here, let's say 400. Some, you know, some of the WSOP events have 3,000, but let's just say average is 400. Let's say they pay 16%. You can see here I clicked 63 places, which is 16%. That's quite a lot. And by being conservative in our estimates and flattening out the payout structure, we can see his best case scenario. So we're gonna go 16%, the buy-in on average is 2,500. Again, this is average, sometimes he's gonna play a 5K or a 10K, sometimes he's gonna play a 1K or a 500 event. But it's not really that important to think about the buy-in. What, what it was important is to 
realize what percentage of his bankroll that represents so that you can do this situation on your own. The fee, let's say, is 3%. Let's say it's like $100, something like that. And that's about an average fee. And let's say that the number, we're gonna skip around, the number is 40, plays 40 tournaments a year. Um, now, ROI. So this is where there's a large debate in the poker community about what is an a fair ROI for a great tournament player. So without getting into the whole debate here, we're gonna have to take for granted, uh, we're gonna have to take with a grain of salt some of my estimations, my numbers, but let's say that the best player in the world has an average ROI of like 50 or 100%. Right? That, that's, that's sort of like ballpark what a lot of experts are saying. Sometimes in the main event, people say it could be two or 300%. Other events that are tougher, like high rollers, it's gonna be way smaller, like 10 or 15%. Let's say that the best player has something like 50%. John's not the best player, he's top 5%. I think it's a little too ambitious to say uh, gonna be the best player in the world um, to simulate the best player in the world just because it's not really that practical. We wanna simulate something that is, is attainable. Um, anyway, so let's say we're gonna do like 30% ROI, which is very, very good. So it might not be the best player in the world, but this is very good ROI. If you have a 30% ROI in tournaments, you're doing a great job. Number is 40. Sample size, this is important uh, because it's the number of times it's gonna run this simulation. So if you run this simulation twice, you're not gonna have statistically significant data similarly to flipping a coin twice and saying, oh, well, it's, it's, it's heads every time. It's like you need to run enough samples. So a thousand is a good number because it gets you statistically significant data. Click calculate, pretty simple. Scroll down here, skip over this. For now, you could go over in this later. Again, I go over this in much more detail. I have like an hour long video in a course that I'm putting out soon. So if you want more information, subscribe below. But for now, I just wanna keep this short, go over the, the things you kinda of need to focus on here. Buy-in and fees. So he's gonna be using his whole bankroll over the course of a year. Again, not at one time. He's only risking two and a half percent at any one time. Um, EV, this is how much he is expected to make, 31,000, so 30% 30 return. Um, average profit, right there again, average ROI, minus the rake. So this is all pretty standard stuff. Skew, uh, don't worry about this stuff. What, what we need to really focus on is the probability of loss, okay? So this is just the probability that he will be have a losing year is 51%. So that's, that's truly incredible because it's basically break even that he's going to win. Um, and that's that's daunting to me, really, when you look at these numbers, um, thinking about being a tournament pro or, or, or being John, right? It doesn't mean tournament pro, he might play cash games on the side, but this is, you know, even if tournaments represent one part of his bankroll, this is what the numbers say it's going to be. 70% um, confidence interval is, Basically, 70% of the time, you could expect these results. So he's gonna lose 56,000 to 137,000, or this is like the most he's gonna lose. 99.7% um, confidence intervals, two standard deviations. That's basically like almost 100% of the time, you're gonna expect to have numbers within these results. So from negative 90,000 to positive 445,000. So this is his worst case scenario, is losing 90,000 and his best case scenario is winning 445,000. 70% uh, confidence interval just means one standard deviation, so 70% of the time he's gonna fall within this range. Minus 56 to plus 137. 95% of the time he's gonna fall within this range. Um, so it's pretty daunting. Um, and you could read more about like these numbers down here and like how to, how to use this and like what the distribution means, but, but even if you re-simulate these numbers and you say, well, okay, he plays more tournaments than that. Alec, you know, I play, I play every WSOP event. So I play 80 tournaments a year, which is like two a week almost. Um, you go down here, your probability of loss is still 36%. So even if you play 80 events a year, that's like every WSOP no limit event plus tournaments full time, uh, you know, you're still th one out of three years you're gonna be losing. Doesn't mean, doesn't tell you how much you're gonna be losing, it just means you're gonna have a losing year, which is insane. So you can see how even one of the best players in the world with 100K bankroll playing big events with a 30% ROI is easy to be a loser. Now, 
I want to caveat here with one thing that I think is really important to keep in mind, and that's being, even if you're not in this 36%, let's say you're a winner, winning means profitable ROI. So you might never make a final table or never win or never get top three or never have be famous or have any accolades. You, never, you might never have that satisfaction of winning a tournament. It just means you might min cash your way to being profitable. And this data accounts for those simulations. So it's really important to think about the whole scope of what it means to play tournaments and understand what it's like. If you're gonna say like, I wanna simulate how long it's gonna take for me to make a final table, you know, that's not calculated in this event. That's not calculated in the simulation or how long it's gonna take for me to win. So it's pretty important to keep in mind all these numbers here. Let's go over a few more simulations here just to get you like the best case scenario. Let's say you're like 60% ROI and you play 80 tournaments a year. This is like, you know, best player in the world type of status. Um, you still have a 25% chance of having a losing year. So like, even if your ROI is double this guy, you can see that the probability of loss doesn't really change. Again, I'm focusing on probability of loss because for your situation, this is the most practical friggin' thing, right? Like, how likely is it that I'm gonna win or lose? How likely is it I'm gonna return on my investment? It's pretty damn important. Um, so even if you have 100% ROI, you know, like, ah, I'm better than that, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the best. You know, you're still gonna lose one out of 10 years. Playing 80 tournaments a year with 100% ROI, that's, this is like straight up Phil Helm with Daniel Negreanu, like, success level. Um, whoever you want to say is the best tournament player in the world. doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter who we debate is the best. If you just want to take, you know, you're the best, you're still going to lose one out of 10 years, which is insane. So this is, you know, this could be your year. This could be your year. And like, that's the difference between someone hearing about you and no one ever knowing anything in poker. There's just this amount of luck. Now, if I were to do this in cash games, which again, I do in uh, more in depth in my video series, you can see these numbers are completely different. And that's why I have my specific formula that I use for tournaments and cash games to make sure that these two things are balanced out and the, the level of money that you're risking is proportionate to the luck and the variance and the risk involved. And using my bankroll management system, it's, it's, it's really a way to ensure that you're not gonna go broke as long as you are a profitable player. So I encourage you guys to check that out if you want more information about it. But I really hope you enjoyed this tournament variance calculator. I love the stuff on PokerDope, shout out to them. I highly recommend you use this to plan out your bankroll. Again, you could customize these numbers for your own situation. Um, just be smart, don't risk too much of your money in any one event and um, be aware of the variance you're risking. Now that you have all the information, what can we take away from this? What like which, what modifications should that do I recommend are like practical to make for most people out there that are that love the competition of tournaments. They love the idea of tournaments. They they maybe want the big score that comes with tournaments, but at the same time they don't want to succumb to this ridiculous variance and be like, oh well, you know, my whole next year is 50-50 of whether or not I even make a dollar. And a lot of people aren't, you know, can't afford that or they don't want that for their personal situation. So this is what I recommend to be something that you guys could do that's reasonable, just a good situation for most people. I would say you should probably play some tournaments. I understand that people love them, they're fun, they're competitive, and you do have that like lotto ticket chance with edge to win, right? Maybe you're playing the lottery, but you know two of the numbers, okay? Something like that. You have a chance of making a large amount of money. But you also have to be financially responsible and say, look, there's a ridiculous amount of variance here, so I'm gonna supplement that with cash games. If you're a good winning player, I would say, look, you know, play something like 60, 70, 80, 90% cash games, and then save, you know, 10, 20, 30% of your bankroll, depending on your situation, how much variance you could afford, what, how good you are, what games you have access to, etc for tournaments. So think about it like a stock portfolio, right? You, you want to have something that's balanced. You want to have some things that are high risk that represent a small percentage of your net worth or your portfolio or whatever it is, your business plan. Then you want to have the majority of your life, the majority of your situation be stable and calm and as calm as it can be. And it's not, look, it's not like I'm not going to sit here and be like cash games is the most stable way to make an income. It's still gambling. It's still like super high risk. But within the world of poker, it's the best that we have. It's the lowest variance situation. And I encourage you guys to use Poker Dope as well. You can plug these numbers in for cash games. Maybe I'll do a separate video about variance in cash games later. Uh, if, if you guys like this, leave a comment and I'll, I'll make a video about variance in cash games. But, you know, I would recommend dividing your bankroll up into these two categories and be like, small amounts of it are gonna be high variance for tournaments and large amounts of it, most of it, is going to be low variance for cash games. That's what I do, that's what I recommend my clients to do. It's what a lot of what I teach, so I hope you guys 
take it to heart that you know this is exactly what I um, practice what I preach. So hope you guys enjoy it and uh, that these are a little bit of my thoughts on tournaments. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Leave me a, a comment below. I'd like to hear some of your feedback. Like. What are your results? Have you guys had ridiculous variants in tournaments? Or, uh, you know, does this stuff make sense? If you have any questions about it, I'm happy to answer it here in a comment below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Ask Alec and the new camera. All right, thanks a lot for watching. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.